gonna drag my lock slider. I'm gonna try not to hit the tree. Take a look at this. This is a unique opportunity for me to take a truly built up overland rig on our difficult ironclads Rocky Mountain Trail. This is a brand new GMC Sierra 1500 84X, but it's also the ultimate overland build. And thanks to Nick Janes and Overland Expo team and everybody who has provided all of the accessories and products for this truck, uh, this truck came together. But in this video, I wanna see how truly capable this truck is. This truck has a lot of off-road technology built into it, but it's also very heavy and big. So I'm gonna take it on several obstacles. And the first one is gonna be my ditch crossing, which is an articulation test. And the second one will be the steps, then the razor rocks, and then true from there. And then, by gosh, I wanna go as far as I can. So, ditch crossing is here right now. Okay, so I just switched into neutral and I'm gonna go to four low. It's blinking and now it said, yes, it did it. So that was pretty easy. I'm gonna have my off-road screen here, my transmission temp here, my tire pressures here, and of course it disconnected traction control and some other systems for me as well. Okay, so this test is designed to upset the vehicle, get two wheels into the air. It's telling me it's losing traction. Yes, so that's understandable because my lockers are not engaged. Okay, so here's my second attempt through the ditch crossing, but this time I'm going to engage both rear and front locking differentials. And the 84X has that from the factory. Of course, I'll show you exactly how this truck is modified in a second, because while it has stock suspension, it has a little trick in the rear as well. I'll show you that in a second. So let's see if I can cross this obstacle without hitting the branch on top. Yeah, um, the lockers just make it super easy. Even the truck was a little bit still teetering. Um, it went with ease over the obstacle. So first obstacle done. When I was planning this trip, I had to make a decision. Uh, how far do I want to go off-road in this beautiful overland truck? And I decided to keep going up ironclads, but this is why we have Onyx off-road maps. Um, I never leave home without it when I'm off-road. So initially I was planning to go from here all the way, entire way, using Bound School Trail up to Ironclads Loop. And it's also offline maps because right now I have very poor reception and I can see exactly where I am and I can also show it inside the truck using Apple CarPlay. Check them out using the link below in the description of this video. Um, using TFL code you can get 20% off an annual subscription to the maps. All right, so as you saw there, this truck is equipped with air rear suspension spring helpers. Uh, the leaves are still there, so the air suspension is only as a help to kind of help level the truck out, get a little bit more clearance in the back uh, because of the, all of the additional weight that's been put on it. And why add weight? Well, because this truck is truly meant for going off the grid for a very long period of time, many days. Uh, I'll show you everything it has throughout this video including the fridge, the camp kitchen, the tables, the chairs, uh, batteries, the tent, and the rest. Uh, obstacle number two is, we call it the steps, and this is a test of approach angle and really um, clearances. This is a stock 84X bumper. So this is also not the latest 
AEV Edition Sierra, American Expedition Vehicle. So that truck has a little bit more cutouts in the front bumper for better approach. But this particular build is running on Firestone Destination MT tires, MT2s. So the tires are not stock. They're a little bit more chunky and beefy. And I do have enough clearance. And I'm going super slowly, making it super difficult for this truck. And the lockers and everything else is really helping me out. And really not a lot of trouble so far. So here I am underneath the rear of the truck. You can see the rear axle, of course. Uh, because it's an AT4X, it's got the DSSV spool valve shocked by Multimatic. But there's something else here that's new. As I was alluding to, uh, these are airbags, air helpers. You could see one here stretched out. Um, so they're attached to the frame at the top and it's attached here to the axle at the bottom. So it's not a floating airbag because some other systems actually an airbag can actually uh, float over the axle and then come in contact with it when it needs to. Now I have another decision to make. Uh, Razor rocks. Wow. It's been really dug out here. So as you can see right here, unfortunately some people have hit this tree. Uh, this tree is very famous if you've been watching TFL for years. We've been using this trail for at least, what, seven or eight years. And this tree we were always afraid of because climbing razor rocks here, you have a tendency to slide down the hill. And um, that's why my decision is a tough one. So here's my problem. Uh, am I gonna clear this with the front bumper or not? If I can put my tire here, I could be in the clear. I can keep climbing. If I hit my bumper here, I damage the truck. Not good. Quite expensive. <laughs> so if I go closer to the tree, I can hit the tree. Well, let me attempt this and see if I have enough clearance. Now you have a good impression of what razor rocks are all about. They truly are razor sharp. Okay, so if I go, if I cut a little bit this way, and then if then, I'm using my cameras too. And if I cut a little bit this way, Am I gonna hit my bumper? I think you might be fine, just go really slow. Keep talking to me. You're right here. Keep going, I think you're good. Keep coming. Keep coming, you got like inches. You're on the rock though, if you can get that right side tire up, yep. Keep it going, yep. I did it, I climbed that rock that was really sketchy, but I have a spotter. Teeter totter. Teeter totter. I'm going to try not to hit the tree. Need a little bit more power. Have plenty of torque. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. This truck, the tires are so grippy and the lockers are incredible. And for as big and heavy as this rig is, I'm very impressed. There was almost zero slip on Razor Rocks. I'm sorry I wasn't talking a lot. I was 
100% concentration there, but I'm super impressed. I'm gonna go check it out. Never touched any skid plate. Victorious! That was pretty cool. Thanks, Cole. Never touched the tree. Really great clearance. The traction was incredibly good. And that's what I really needed, precision traction, so I don't like slide sideways and hit something. Um, and these are pretty sharp. Yes, let's keep going. As you can probably see, the wheel and tire package is not factory. This truck is sitting on these Icon Vehicle Dynamics wheels. These are 17 inch wheel. Um, and then these slightly larger than stock Firestone Destination MT2s. And the size here is 33 by 12 and a half wide by 17, of course, light truck tire. And they're wider than stock, a little bit. And they're a little bit lar uh, more diameter than stock because the stock truck is rolling on 32s. So I'm really glad they updated the tires a little bit on this build because every inch counts when the going gets tough like this. So this is um, another great help that this truck offers is that in the front I can put the tire within a millimeter of a rock and I can have really good resolution actually while I'm driving and this helped me on razor rocks and I can also change my view the rear tires because they're further away the resolution drops dramatically but for the front tires resolution is good and I can also see the front view as well if I need it even though it flattens the image the terrain it's still a bit helpful so that was nice The next obstacle we call true for dare. Why? Because it's a fork in this trail and it's a little bit easier on the left and harder on the right. So I'm gonna take the dare side, but I wanted to show you my infotainment screen and the latest interior here. It's kind of interesting because I can move these widgets around. So if I wanna reorganize it, but also my cameras. This is gonna be critical because there's a lot of pokey rocks and I did not air down too much, actually 34 PSI, because I didn't want to lose ground clearance. And I'm not on loose sand, so I decided to keep it this way. But there are still really sharp rocks, as you can see on my camera screen. And I really don't want to uh, pinch a sidewall, pop a tire, and uh, get stuck up here for a little while changing tires. So this is there, I'm gonna attack it right here. Ooh, those pokey rocks are really washed out and huge. Okay, there's the first rock. I'm gonna take it here. My second rock, I'm gonna try to sidestep it. And I don't know if I'm gonna hit. Am I hitting it? Okay, my tire took care of it. Will my rear hit? I don't know. I think that was okay. Now I need to make a wider turn. There's a root. Okay, past it. Now I gotta make a sharp right hand turn. And there's that big rock too that I was trying to avoid. Beautiful, okay, so that was there, most of it, but the final part of there is this rock slab where I may need to attack it diagonally and I may run out of ground clearance. This could be a big problem. So let me try to approach it and see where it takes me. Once again, my slow going is really reassuring. I have great traction and now 
I'm staring over this little bit of a cliff and I don't know if I can I might touch my skid plates or something worse I'm gonna get out and look I, I have to I have to go check it I, I'm not sure I need to go and check this because I'm afraid of hitting something here So this is the rock slider I was talking about, protecting the, uh, the cab. Uh, that's okay, that's good protection, but what's below it? <sighs> you know what? I might get away with it. Let me try. This would be very impressive. You know, the new Hummer and the new GMC Canyon in Colorado have also underbody cameras. And I might have used it now. It would have been handy to get me a little bit more confidence. No scrapes? No, I don't believe that. I usually scrape everything here. What about my departure? Am I gonna hit those beautiful exhausts? Am I gonna hit them? No. Sweet. Wow. So yeah, this this truck is truly uh, one of the easiest uh, on this tough ironclad trail. This is one of the easiest going trucks I have been in. I'm impressed. This truck has a lot of extra lights all the way around. In the front on the A-pillars and also on the roof rack, Rhino rack, are these rigid uh, lights that are actually smart. Yes, uh, they do have a GPS signal and depending on your speed, uh, they can throw wider light when you're going slowly or if the speed increases, the beam could be a little bit narrower pointing further up the trail so, and they adjust automatically. Who would have thunk your lights would have GPS? And of course, there's a big rack, Rhino rack system with an awning and additional storage capability uh, up top. I've been saying it for years, but now I see more of these. The tray beds are getting more popular. And this is a Milts alloy tray bed that's originated in Australia. And it has a lot of storage, but also lockable storage. So let me show you this. Let me unlock here. This is basically a canopy that attaches to the bed itself and it has a lot of different storage compartments. For example, this is our onboard air compressor for tires and also to help with the rear airbags. And then up here, this is basically a three foot canopy because it's, it could be, of course, the full length of the bed or it could be just half or there are other sizes too. And look at this. Beautiful fridge. And La Croix. This is not brought to you by La Croix, by the way. But it's nice and cold. There's the latest Red Arc system for managing the electric usage and also charging. There's a solar panel on top and there's also onboard lithium ion batteries here in the back. And this system kind of shows you exactly what's going on and we're at 99% of charge, so beautiful. The rest of the bed is a utility bed with folding sides, and this can be taken out, so if you want a true flat bed, you can, you can remove the canopy you can remove these sides and have a true flatbed. You can put maybe a motorcycle up there on the ATV or something. Uh, spare tire, really solid mounting. I really love that. There's no rattling, there's no noise. This is a giant tent, 23-0. Let me walk around. You can see it's 
see a nice rail here for attaching straps. This is a full length drawer system back here. See there's like table and other uh, things stored in here. Once again, a little bit bad. And it's also about six foot four inches long, so it's got good size, really nice. Of course, quad exhaust. Last but not least, yeah, we're not done yet. There's a camp kitchen that I can take out. It's strapped down here. Uh, and then you can see the batteries in here. And also the red arc management system on this wall. And then of course the fridge, you can almost hear it running a little bit. Um, back here, lots more storage compartments on the inside, including the chairs. So yeah, that's a lot. All right, so now I do have come to come down the mountain. You know, I was telling you about all these wonderful obstacles I was going up on, but sometimes getting down the mountain is more difficult than coming up. And this is one of those cases. Uh, this is the bypass uh, over where the razor rocks are. And it's quite a ledge. I'm gonna drag my rock slider. Uh, rock slider, thank you very much. You helped out. And then now I have to descend the steps, which is another challenge. And there's a loose rock. I think the side by side just threw up. So it's not ideal. <clears throat> Articulation. anything I did scrape my rock rail but that's why it's there it's probably the biggest most important and you know valuable piece of equipment for doing this trail is that rock slider this is super narrow I really don't want to touch the cab on the tree all right so I did scrape coming down, but success. Nice. Uh, you're probably wondering about price. Well, the base 84X truck, which is already fully optioned off-road rig from GMC, that's close to 80,000 bucks, about 79,000. And then everything else, there's a lot going on here and I cannot give you an itemized list right now, but be safe to say, with the bed, with the canopy, the fridge, the battery system, red arc, racks, lights, other accessories. This is over $100,000. So yeah, this is an expensive rig, but I think it is the ultimate, like they say, because I was a little worried about how heavy and big it was, but they did ironclads with barely a scratch on the rock rail. I'm pretty happy. And as always, go back to alttfl.com for everything automotive, one-stop shop right there.